Good evening, folks, and um, just giving a chance to people to come online uh, live with us this evening. Um, as you know, over the last uh, few days, last week in particular, we have been uh, discussing a number of issues around health. And um, the key is to try and, I suppose, give people some element of control over their own lives. <clears throat> and if that can be done, then that's great because, um, you know, People need to be responsible. People need to take control of their own lives. People need to realize that things that they are doing every day is having a direct influence in their life. Myra Geary, Laura Murphy, I see you all joining there. Aaron as well. <clears throat> so uh, to my uh, left, your right, as you're looking probably at the camera, is Mary Karen. Mary is uh, a nutritionist, functional medical nutritionist, and uh, Mary's job uh, is to... Uh, give you some advice with regard to uh, nutritional changes and of course Mary's <clears throat> uh, nutritional advice is also going to be form part of the program that I'll be talking to you about uh, in a little while with regard to your um, uh, health and that program is about the family health care program and that's going to be very interesting when we talk about it and what the program uh, entails and how it is that it can <clears throat> make a huge difference in people's lives. Also in the room, of course, with us, you don't see her, Erin uh, Perkins. So Erin is uh, kind of taking in the questions that you might have to ask. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. Jerry Pender, I see you all the way from London. Uh, so please put uh, on uh, with your name where you're from. <clears throat> Loads of love hearts oh coming my. in there. Lovely to see all those, whoever's doing all that. But that's great. But look, this evening, uh, you know, put the, the area you're from. I had a lovely message this morning from some, somebody in Australia. Uh, and so listening to it, so please, as I said to you, uh, if you can um, put the area you're from as well, it'd be nice to see that people are coming from all over the world, basically. So the, in a moment or so, we're going to start chatting to you about <clears throat> different types of problems, different types of health issues. Um, you know, the, the people have come, have contacted us with a number of questions regarding health. At this point, I want to make it very clear, this is not about replacing medicine. This is not about telling people to get off their medication. You know, by all means, medicine has a role to play. And it's important that, uh, you know, people do not alter their intake of their medication in any way, shape or form. Uh, the important thing for, for you now is to begin to realize that you can change your life. Uh, you can change your health, that your quality of life uh, can be much, much better and your quality of health can be much, much better. And indeed, we can have a life without illness. It depends <clears throat> on the attitude that we take and the time and effort we're willing uh, to put in to play. Lovely to see you on Lisa. I see you on Lisa. Uh, Wallace Lisa, of course, who's <clears throat> a lady I looked after in, in, in the UK uh, with who suffered from fibromyalgia. I know she won't mind me saying that because this is already in the public domain and uh, her story is actually on our website as well. Lisa, uh, she's become our first member and uh, buying the, the online uh, biology therapy program uh, that we are going to begin to launch tonight. So Lisa, lovely to see you on. Hope all is good in the UK. The um, question, a lot of people have been contacting us regarding different types of, of problems, including what Lisa had, uh, you know, neuropathic pain, asthma, eczema, fibromyalgia, lupus, hemochromatosis, diabetes, people with Raynaud's disease, ulcerative colitis, a lady contacted me with it, uh, about today. All of these types of issues, and <clears throat> obviously it's going to be different to... Um, you know, cover every every one of them individually because there's so many different types of illnesses. Uh, but the thing is that um, we're going to uh, kind of group them and, and, and look at autoimmune diseases. I'll talk to you about the, what I think they are and, and, and the way we deal with them in the clinic. And, uh, you know, Mary will come in and talk to you about the uh, nutritional side of things and, and, and how it can help. So <clears throat> looking forward to this. So as I said to you, the fibromyalgia, uh, you know, the, uh, we see a lot of this now. And fibromyalgia is, I often sometimes think that it's, it's a condition that it's real. But the, 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 the amazing thing about it, for the most of the people that I see, um, that they have all the medical analysis done and nothing shows up. <clears throat> so they have fatigue, they have a lot of pains and aches, a lot of inflammation, digestive problems, poor concentration, all of these types of things. And these symptoms are sort of a multiple of symptoms, a syndrome. And these syndromes are classed because they fit certain boxes, they, they're classed as being fibromyalgia. And of course, the thing is that if you, die, if you have a, a medical diagnosis, uh, then that medical diagnosis carries with it a certain uh, prescription uh, medication. 
and normally it's painkillers, anti-inflammatories, antidepressants, sleeping pills, <clears throat> you know, and much more. And in, in the clinic, I see a lot of people taking, you know, medication like Lyrica, people on uh, Neurontin, people on Amitriptyline, these types of medications, you know, for the pain. And then, of course, it causes, uh, you know, these cause a lot of discomfort to the body as well as the conditions. A lot of the problem with the likes of fibromyalgia and these types of situations is that um, it's a lot of it begins with the way we push ourselves in lives. You know, we push ourselves to the limit. You know, you know, women in particular, I see a lot of this uh, who are being diagnosed with this type of problem. Probably there are men who have the same symptoms, but class different. And a lot of it is the way you live your life, you know, that you're pushing yourself every day, you're getting up in the morning, you're trying to raise a family, get a family out of school, you might be taking them to a creche, taking them to a nursery, whatever, you're going home, or you're trying to get ready to go to work, you're working all day, you're coming home, you know, you haven't time for yourself, you're then picking up your kids, you're arranging something to eat, and you're getting caught up in this vicious cycle, and suddenly you're pushing yourself when you're on this treadmill, and, uh, you know, it's like I say that a life like that, in which a lot of people live now, a life like that is simply, uh, you know, where you're surfing. It's like a wave, okay? If you imagine your life is like a big wave and that you're surfing that way, you're on a surfboard, you know, you can't sustain the pace that you're going at. So what happens is eventually you, become, you come crashing down. And when you come crashing down, and of course the crash comes long before that, the indications of these types of inflammation and all that come long before that. You know, it comes when uh, you start maybe feeling tired and, and so on and suddenly you start creating a behavioral pattern around food and some of that food then is going to cause inflammation and Mary is going to talk to you about in a moment. And of course, because it affects the digestive function, I've talked to you about the bacteria already. And when you change the bacteria in the gut, when you're stressed from all of the going, <clears throat> then the key to it is that, well, what happens is the stress hormones are going to create a high level of acidity in the body. Uh, the stress hormones are going to cause uh, a lot of tension in the muscles, you know, tightness of the skull bones, the cerebrospinal fluid won't flow, you know, you'll get pressure headaches, your blood pressure might go up or indeed in some cases go down and, you know, it's a spiral out of control and then it's, as I said, off to the doctor with the fatigue, with the usual things and that's important to get the medical analysis. So what happens then you get the blood test done, everything comes back fine. <clears throat> and then you may be sent for further analysis and further analysis, seeing a rheumatologist, all of that kind of thing. The rheumatologist says, well, look, you have all of these symptoms and I think this is fibromyalgia. And yet fibromyalgia, you know, we don't see, there's nothing showing up in blood, our blood tests for, for most people. And <clears throat> then you're going home and you're no better and you're uh, taking medication and, uh, you know, your life is still the same and nothing changes. And then you don't get better and then you go on a merry-go-round going here, there and everywhere trying to sort your problem. You know, who has the magic one, the magic pill, the magic bullet? And it doesn't sort itself. Uh, it's ultimately, as I said, over the last couple of days, you've got to come back to yourself to sort it. So how do we sort people's problems who have fibromyalgia? First thing is <clears throat> we have to get the energy system right. When people come here, we get the energy system right. We work with a series of techniques that we've developed to bring the energy system of the body, the bioelectrical system of the body back into balance. Once we bring that bioenergetic system of the body back into balance, this relaxes the body, it re stops the body producing stress hormones, it relaxes the skull, it allows the gut function to, to the, the gut to function better. <clears throat> and once we start doing that, uh, then we start supporting that with the right nutrition. So it's important then that people come in and look at it because some people say to us, oh, well, I can't make these changes because they're too much. I can't go off this, that, or the other. But if people are serious about their health, nutrition plays a major role. Once we have the energy flowing, the patient's mindset has to be focused on the recovery. We teach them to deal with their emotional stress, and this is with all conditions, but then as I said, the nutrition is absolutely fundamental. So Mary, you'd like to maybe comment okay. on that. Okay, hi everyone. <clears throat> uh, I suppose the, the first thing when I even get referrals of uh, clients from Michael's clinic, or if people come in the door to me with fibromyalgia is First of all, everyone is different. So everyone's going to have a different reason why they're in the situation they are now. So it's um, whether you get somebody like me or you do it yourself, you have to try and look back at, at when things started to change and when the shift happened and when you felt uh, tired or an achier and all that. So if you can start to kind of uh, put your own jigsaw together, that's the huge thing. So it's to look at your own history. Was there something 
stressful that happened around the time that you found that the symptoms were coming on. So that would be a huge thing because often uh, it can be um, maybe a hormone shift if you were pregnant or uh, just different systems um, when they're going through different phases or age and all the rest of it or if you were abroad traveling and picked up infections. So you have to look very much at um, is it caused maybe by an infection? So um, we're assuming you've had the medical test done, but uh, some infections, for example, mightn't show up in a standard test. So it's to examine all the different um, tests that are available. So it's to look at parasites, infections. The other thing that's huge to do with fibromyalgia are uh, food sensitivities. So uh, it's really important to try and pinpoint what might be causing this uh, challenge to your body and um, you can do it uh, cheap if you have the funds to go and get a uh, blood lab test done uh, the, you can do it um, cheaply at home and do a food elimination where you remove the most common um, foods that cause issues and uh, for example the likes of gluten and dairy and all that can be huge or sugar in particular because it's inflammatory so you majorly have to remove the foods that are known to be in, in, inflammatory on the body. Uh, that would be the main thing. The other thing that's um, to look at what will calm your body, what will relax it, what will be a natural um, pain relief. So uh, what we find huge is uh, the likes of magnesium, which is your relaxant mineral. And you can get it, you can um, increase your intake of magnesium through foods or you can supplement also the likes of Epsom sauce baths um, are a really good way of getting your magnesium levels up so we'd look at all that side of it there's so many different um, I suppose approaches so you come at it from all sides try and relax the body um, and then it's very much individual like I said it's very much looking at the common cause the common foods that cause inflammation and the common foods that because they cause inflammation cause the pain and that just um, um, cause your body to be tired and achy. What's very important as well is to remove um, very much artificial colours and flavours. Uh, absolutely. So the likes of aspartame and MSG would be the first to go. Um, also any stimulants like, uh, like I know a lot of people would probably be um, pinning their energy on having a cup of coffee and tea and all that but uh, any caffeine is going to inflame your body even further so there would be an awful lot of natural like herbal teas and uh, tonics that you can take um, that would be an awful lot better option and then when life settles down you can reintroduce a lot of the foods and the drinks that you might have removed when when you are unwell, you need to, I suppose, make the efforts if you do want to get well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, that's the, I think that's the important thing is that for each person coming into our clinic, we have to look at them as a different person. Yeah. So one person, has, as Mary said, has a condition for one reason or another. Uh, for another reason. Uh, I mean, something that we notice as well for people coming into our clinics, that one thing we always say is, you know, have you had been assessed for Lyme disease? Mm -hmm. We see how prevalent that is, uh, you know, throughout even Ireland. <clears throat> you know, uh, tick bites, uh, you know, as Mary alluded to, uh, we know people who have gone to Asia and had vaccines, and we know people who've gone to Asia and maybe come back with some type of infection uh, because of water and food and how it has led to so many different mm -hmm. symptoms, mimicking the type of condition we call fibromyalgia, and, and it kind of nearly leads Trigger. us into it's triggering the immune it's, it's system triggering and an it's immune triggering. Response. Yeah. and it can trigger yeah. underlying viruses in the body mm -hmm. as well that's mm -hmm. the other problem um actually another big um thing i think to consider is um somebody asked that we touch on hemochromatosis but you know hemochromatosis um is extremely common and um it can be, it can, it goes very undiagnosed, but it can be a huge cause of joint pain and tiredness yes. and, um, and actually high blood sugars. Cause if you've, if you are, um, store, if you're high levels of iron in your blood, you're going to naturally then have high blood sugars. So it would be, I think it's, it's a, a test we need to push more. So, yes. uh, hemochromatosis, 
you need to get an iron panel uh, test done with ferritin. So you can't just go along to your doctor and get an ordinary blood test. So you need to get a special blood test with your storage iron um, checked. So I, especially in, in Ireland, we have a very high incidence of hemochromatosis and an awful lot of people um, develop an awful lot of chronic um, pain. pain and issues and yeah. problems with organs and all the rest of it. Yeah. And the other uh, test that would be, that isn't readily available to us, but it is a big factor to do with aches and pains and tiredness and toxic toxic to the body would be homocysteine as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you might need to go to a specialist doctor to get it done in Ireland, in England and other countries, it's readily available. Uh, at the GP, but um, to do with heart health and aches and pains and inflammation in the body, homocysteine would be huge. So uh, that would be another thing. So it all links in. It is, well. yeah. And, and that's the thing about it that I suppose you, during the week I was saying to you, you know, when medicine was first devised, it was devised around infection. We produced antibiotics and in the mid uh, in the 1840s. Uh, so the thing was that, um, sorry, 1940s, uh, that we've, that where antibiotics were produced uh, and discovered. And of course, the whole idea was that we would kill and kill, kill, kill. And the thing about it is we cannot kill what we need to survive, as I was saying. So the idea of the antibiotic, uh, you know, solving our problems is over. In actual fact, antibiotics have weakened our immune su system now, made us susceptible to a lot of issues. And then, as Mary said, when we're taking a lot of toxicity in from our food, or we're taking food in that stimu stimulating an immune response. Because always remember that when you're fatigued and tired and all, these are uh, symptoms of something. And those symptoms, as Mary said, is of inflammation. Inflammation. And always remember, inflammation, you can take anti-inflammatories, but why? Mm. Ask yourself the question, why is your body inflamed? Why is your body temperature up? And you're inflamed simply because it's your immune system responding to something going on. So when we get the energies flowing, when we get your mindset focused, when you're able to relax and then you bring in what Mary is talking about, having a much greater in-depth look. <clears throat> for some people, you know, they, they may not have to go into that in-depth, but if it's to progress, then you have to. Mm -hmm. For some people, the general kind of guidelines we give people yeah. in our clinics, you know, uh, and that Mary gives, is often enough to enable people to overcome their problem. And this is where modern medicine needs to move to, uh, uh, because, you know, the, 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 it needs that integrated approach. Uh, it's no longer enough to hand out an anti-inflammatory painkiller or an antidepressant or it's no longer good enough just to say, well, we'll try an antibiotic and it'll work. It doesn't work. You can't try something to see if it'll work. So <clears throat> people with fibromyalgia, or as Mary said, with the likes of the uh, hemochromatosis or <clears throat> The same principle applies with, you know, with the likes of, of uh, uh, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. We lay the same foundation, but the, the immune system responds different. Yes, it then starts to produce inflammation in the gut and a lot of mucus builds up in the system and you alter the bacteria. And it's standard medicine, you know, they will uh, prescribe the Humira or all of those uh, immunosuppressants, Infleximab, uh, you know, all of these types of things, that's fine. Uh, high dose of steroids. Uh, some people have to have surgery. <clears throat> we were dealing with a, a young kid, um, John, um, about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe, you know, actually it's about a year ago, and uh, he's actually on one of our testimonies as well, and he was uh, diagnosed with, uh, with, 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 um, with a digestive issue like this and uh, you put on all the medication but ultimately by changing uh, his, uh, his habits, by changing his behavior, by working with the energy, looking at what Mary was talking about, what might have caused the problem, you know now the medical people are saying oh this is great, there's a huge change here so now we can look at removing some of the medication and that's fantastic that rather than the uh, you know idea that somebody might have to have a part of their bowel removed so you know what I'm saying is Again, if you're on immunosuppressants because you've also of colitis or because you have Crohn's disease and because of it progressing and we know how debilitating it is, uh, we know you, you can't leave your home sometimes, you're afraid, you know, to go somewhere, you don't know where is the nearest loo, you know, you're suffering from diarrhea, you a lot of mucus, bleeding, lots of things. And, uh, you know, I get it because I, we talk to patients all the time with this problem. <clears throat> but again, what we're seeing is that when we work with the energy system and get change that energy system of the body and, and, and uh, work with the right nutritional approach, and, you know, the most important thing is to get the compliance, that you comply with what we're saying. And even it helps for medicine to work better. 
that's the great thing about it, you know, that when we make the changes, it does help for med help medicine to work together. So, you know, if you have, um, you know, gut function problems, like I, like we said, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, diverticulitis, you know, stricture spasms, all of these types of things, regurgitation, it's no good just taking, you know, um, uh, the protein pump inhibitors all the time, no good taking of Nexium and all these types of things all of the time. You know, a lot more is going on. And of course, once the gut is wrong, then everything feeds from there. <clears throat> everything is going to feed from there. So uh, Mary, again, for people who have those types of digestive issues, because this can also lead to respiratory problems, by the way, mm. you know, asthma, asthmatic symptoms, asthma, because of the excessive production of mucus, high levels of dairy, just don't work, you know, for people like this, as Mary will talk to you about, you know, red meats and things like that. So it is important that again, we take out what is feeding. So if you were to think of every disease, known to man is a live living organism. What are you feeding it? It has to be fed to survive. It's fed by our environment, our food, our mindset, our emotions, and our energy system. So we must stop feeding it. If we stop feeding it, it can't grow. It'll die and we'll, it'll, the, the body will heal itself. So for people, Mary, again, with, with the, the likes of those problems, those all sorts of colitis, Crohn's disease, you know, some little things that would be of help to them. I'd say, actually, I was thinking, no matter what we talk about here today, every condition goes back to the gut. And mm -hmm. it'll all go back to the balance of bacteria microbes. and microbes and the microbiome in the gut so uh it's just centered so the again uh i suppose when you're talking about specifically digestive problems um you have to look from the very start from when you're putting food into your mouth to when it's passing through in the toilet so mm. first of all you're looking at the type of foods you're putting in okay and whether they're um just very lacking nutrients or if they're nutrient dense are they foods that suit you because that is one of the hugest um things to look at is like what can be amazing for one person um and even i find a lot of people can um follow a lot of the you know the current guidelines of what's really healthy eating and suddenly they find they're not feeling they're feeling even worse because it might be that the likes of eggs or um, common foods that they just don't agree with you. But anyway, it's what you put in your mouth. Then are you relaxed when you're eating? Are you, um, you know, uh, uh, they say appreciating the food even. This all helps in your digestion. Then have you got sufficient stomach acid, which is a major thing because uh, we need our stomach acid to be about uh, very acidic it's like battery acid really we need it to be between about 1.5 to 1.9 and if you're taking proton pump inhibitors or whatever um to just calm down if you imagine that your digestive issues are due to low or high stomach acid when in actual fact more than 90 percent of the time is due to low stomach acid you're causing a whole domino effect of problems down the line. So the very, the most crucial part of our digestion is actually um, the, the stomach and making sure that we're, we've got enough stomach acid so that when the food is leaving the stomach, that it's leave, leaving the stomach digested, like the proteins, the whole digestion of them has started. Plus it needs to be a certain pH when it moves into the small intestine so that then our pancreatic enzymes are kicking into action. And also, so you have to look at all of it. You have to look at the whole digestive process, like um, the stomach, the gallbladder, the pancreas. Are, are we, is our um, gut flora balanced? If you're on the contraceptive pill or have, if you've been taking antibiotics or a lot of different medications, really affect the balance of our microbiome, as does if, if you're stressed due to work or if you're over exercising or, or uh, pushing your body too much all these things affect the balance of our microbiome plus if you're uh, someone who uh, is taking in drinks and foods every day that has artificial sweeteners and colors that completely affects our balance of microbiome as well so then it moves into the large the large intestine and uh, like the other thing, the li our liver needs to be working well because our liver is the obviously the biggest uh, detoxifier in the body. So like 
different foods, different nutrients, uh, they, they all make sure that our body and our digestive system is working right. But if we're missing certain cofactors like certain minerals and vitamins, because we're not getting it into our food, that's going to cause a load of problems. So the likes of Crohn's, um, irritable bowel, um, an inflammatory bowel disease, um, you have to look first of all very much at the foods, your stress levels, uh, the balance of bacteria. And again, it, uh, in the program, in the online program with Michael, we look very much at how how you can rebalance your, your gut bacteria. And um, it, it's hugely, um, it's a, a huge central to Partridge, yeah. yeah, and, and yeah. The, thing, the thing is that uh, you know we're getting some questions in about depression and hormones and all that, and it, all of that you see alters your hormone system, and you can go on hormone replacement treatment, and sometimes people have negative effects of that, and, <clears throat> and often it's about going back and looking at what we're just talking about. But when you think of the gut as well, you know, not many people realize it. About eighty percent of serotonin is is produced in your gut. Mm -hmm. So Mary say that if your gut is not functioning right, if you're taking uh, certain medications that are suppressing the acid in your system and your body's not producing the enzymes, so you're not breaking your food down, that means you're not converting your food <clears throat> to what it needs to convert to like serotonin. So therefore you're going to have that low mood, you're going to have that fatigue. And of course then that doesn't convert to melatonin so you can't sleep at night time. So you can see what we're trying to say here that you know a lot of the stress levels that we're going through in life alters the energy system of our body, affects our behavior around our food, alters the microbial system of our gut. This in turn then, uh, when we feed it the wrong food, we take medication to deal with the symptoms. We're told we have irritable bowel. I don't buy what this irritable bowel is. What is irritable bowel? How can a bowel be irritable? If your digestive system is it's either functioning or it's not functioning, and if it's not, it's no good putting a medical term like irritable bowel syndrome on it. <clears throat> That's not good enough just because you're bloated. Just because you have gases, regurgitation, constipation, diarrhea. You know, it's like people eating gluten, as Mary said earlier. You know, a lot of kids love all the white foods and they love the breads. And this gluten converts to a morphine-based chemical. And of course, this is what constipates the body. You know, we see the kids coming into us with these types of problems. Or anybody out there, you know, who's saying they've hurt their bowel, they've constipation, they're going and they're taking their various laxatives or whatever the case may be. Look. The key to getting your gut functioning properly is simple, relaxation. Because in your digestive system, you have what's called the enteric nervous system. This is a part of your autonomic nervous system, this gut feeling. So when you're stressed, that autonomic nervous system is going to overload in the gut, esophagus and throat. <clears throat> Once that starts to happen, uh, you know, then you're getting the wrong food in, everything is blocked. So when the bowel gets blocked, you cannot process, you cannot eliminate waste, and that waste backs up into the system, the lymph system, the veins, the arteries, the tissues, joints, and therefore you get all this tiredness and fatigue and so on and so forth. So I hope you're getting the message from us as to what this is about. Have you, just in relation to that uh, Margaret's uh, point there, Mary, about you know dealing with the side effects of the hormone uh, replacement therapy that a lot of people, okay. uh, a lot of women in particular, are, are taking that. Uh, you know how effective it is. We know that there's post uh, issues, uh, post uh, um, hormonal replacement treatment, treatment as well yeah. from a coronary perspective. But, but because <laughs> there will be a lot of uh, natural ways to support her body that will naturally help to get the hormones back in balance as mm -hmm. well. You know the likes of estrogen foods, of course, is causing a big problem for people. They say nowadays. Uh, yeah, he, um, I suppose it's the there's a lot of um, forms of estrogen in our I suppose in plastics and in the environment and in mm -hmm. in the foods. Yes. So they're yes. compounding the problems. You see, mm -hmm. um, but there would be a lot of um, really helpful ways. Of, even certain um, herbal teas and the likes of uh, flaxseed and and uh, chia seeds and. Uh, chickpeas and all those, they all have compounds in them that are very helpful and very easy to include in your diet that will help to yeah. uh, to get the harness back in balance. And the B vitamins, of course. They, <laughs> a huge link. B vitamins are very, very important when it comes to hormone balance and clearing hormones um, mm -hmm. uh, hugely. The other thing I just want to go back, um, a lot of the conditions that we've mentioned already would be autoimmune or classified as autoimmune. Yeah. And the the very first thing that you have to think about um, it, when it comes to autoimmune is that more than likely the gut is comp compromised. More than likely the what you have what's called a leaky gut. So 
um, you have to look at your food straight away. But the other angle to come in at is there's very potent ways to just calm the immune system, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it's to just find out what's going to calm it um, and remove, and that is by removing certain things and adding other things, you yes. know. And yes. then a whole, I suppose, your whole effort is to rebalance the gut, the, the get the, the gut back in order, yes. and uh, then you'll see that the, the immune system calms down and um, suddenly you might not be dealing with the issue uh, anymore, you know, yeah. so... Um, that's true, that's and huge. one of the greatest ways to calm uh, the body, of course, um, because when Mary talked about the immune system, I mean, Professor Fergus Shanahan says, a very good article recently, that, you know, in actual fact, uh, calling, calling something an autoimmune problem is wrong because you're implying that it's the immune system that's at fault. It's not. The immune system is responding to the fault. We need to figure out what the fault is. So that's what we focus on. And one of the greatest ways of doing this, and I uh, touched on it the other night, uh, two nights ago, uh, was relaxation and visualization. You know, relaxing the body before you go to sleep at night, learning to do some abdominal breathing. And I hope some of you got onto my website, michaelodotti.com, and got the little freebie, transform your stress into vitality stuff, because there's a little CD on that that helps to you know to, to, to relax and to, to eliminate a lot of stress and this is very powerful that if you can internally shower the stress of your daily life uh, that has a direct effect on your immune system so it's important that you you know uh, do that if you haven't uh, you know already heard that go back over the clips that we've already that I've already done I've covered it so that'll really help <clears throat> so thinking about that at this stage I want to thank everybody for uh, for, for joining and uh, Myra Geary of course I want to thank you very much for joining us there and um, everybody who's joining us from different parts of Ireland different parts of the of the world I want to appreciate you taking the time and coming in hope we're not boring you because we plan to do this uh, so some little bit more often to help people to try and deal with their issues as I said we're not looking to replace medicine we're looking to give people other ways to confront their problems because we believe that you can uh, have a better life um, Neve is talking about um, uh, vertigo um, okay so vertigo and of course Neve if, if uh, uh, you know, you've been to your GP, uh, you've had all of the analysis done, it's obvious, of course, uh, people, you know, med from a medical perspective, they go and they might do a brain scan, an MRI scan, uh, sometimes uh, it's the inner ear, sometimes it's not, it can be as much, it can be as simple as a vertebrae misaligned in the neck, that if your muscles are tight, you can often misalign a, ver uh, a vertebrae in the neck, uh, it can be a blood pressure issue, <clears throat> the important thing is when you have any degree of balance issues, if it's actually vertigo, you're getting that spinning and dizziness and all that and the circ I don't know if it really works for some people it does uh, we've always found that um, if that's what it is then often it's a question of working in the neck area if you had a whiplash injury if you're sitting in front of a computer every day if you're using more than one pillow you're hyperextending the neck region so you can affect the vertebrae area of the neck if it is a thing that you have a serious balance issue obviously of course have the proper medical analysis done ensure that everything is okay look at the circulatory issue you may you know sometimes there can be a vascular problem uh, carotid arteries there can be a vascular issue in the neck uh, there can be a number of different reasons why somebody has vert has vertigo type symptoms as I said, we, it's always important to get the proper medical analysis done. But if it's come back and they've absolutely concluded it's vert, uh, vertigo and there's no uh, apparent issue, uh, then certainly you could, again, stress levels, again, nutrition plays a role yeah, in it. And we already discussed on that. Yeah. And the other thing, as I said to you, but I've always found the neck area to be crucial. And, uh, you know, it is really an area <clears throat> that has been neglected a lot. Uh, because I see people coming in, uh, you know, that have neuropathic type symptoms, tingling, numbness, different types of feelings. As I said, put on the amitriptylines, put on the neurontin, put on high dose steroids, put on all those types of things. And while they all work, it's only until we work with the energy to get the circulatory system right. Uh, to, because when you work with the energy of the body, we are working outside the body. And when you're working with that energy, you're getting that energy to flow. It helps to get the blood flow and it helps to heal any imbalance in that whole uh, nervous system, which can be really, really powerful. So from that uh, vertigo type of thing, as I said to you, Niamh, if, if everything is okay, then I would advise that, yes, certainly uh, the neck is something that you could look at. Uh, you can work with the ears, but Mary, some nutrition advice we find yeah. is very helpful for people with this as well. Uh, huge, what's huge with vertigo is... Um, to look at, uh, have you got a lot of the likes of MSG, uh, monosodium glutamate, in your foods? Because I know uh, a lot of people 
can uh, develop cases of vertigo after having Chinese, for example, because it would be high in MSG. So it would be, it, you see, uh, MSG is an excitatory compound, so a, um, a glutamate is one of the neurotransmitters in our body that is, it's excitatory. So if if you ha have too much of the likes of MSG and aspartame, which would be in diet drinks and stuff, if you are overdosing on them, but you don't have the um, the balancing calming um, compounds in your body, for example, magnesium or GABA, um, what happens is uh, the likes of uh, vertigo can present or you uh, or can develop. So I would first of all just make sure that anything that has MSG in it that you're not touching it, whether you're vertigo or not, I, I, it would be one of my kind of um, no, no. major, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> That's huge. Uh, the other thing is, the, uh, so the likes of magnesium, vitamin C, N-acetylcysteine is really good to have in the cupboard for the likes of uh, vertigo because it um, is a really easy and natural way to help our bodies produce glutathione, which is like a, a, a major detoxer. Um, so if you develop the likes of vertigo or a, a reaction to food and acetylcysteine is super okay mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that would help to calm vertigo would be omega trees because it's naturally an anti-inflammatory so uh, look at those uh, they would be the, my first port to call anyway when it comes to the likes of vertigo mm -hmm. for sure so magnesium again it's uh, through the foods but you can supplement with um, magnesium or your Epsom salts baths or even to put your feet in a basin with magnesium. Magnesium is our calming. So when you have the likes of vertigo, you are um, inflamed and you're um, out of balance. So it's just to calm the whole system again. Um, and again, the gut and the gut flora undoubtedly will come into it. But, um, uh, and our vertigo as well uh, can develop when you're on certain medications because vertigo is all to do with our acetylcholine and that that's all to do with balance in our body so it depends it, always look at, at um, your medications or whether you're after yes. a course of antibiotics like or yeah. you know you need to have a look and especially if medications or something has changed so like I was saying earlier when things start going wrong in your life you try and track back to when did it start going wrong, uh, going wrong and what did I do different then, whether it's a week ago, a month ago, something called, like you always have to ask yourself, why? Why have I vertigo? Why have I colitis? Why have I fibromyalgia? You know, there's always a reason. And, um, and then no matter what you're suffering with, there's always, always, always natural ways of, um, treating it with it whether you do it in combination with medi medications or not but the the other huge thing is if you are on medications you have to realize every drug causes um Sorry. a depletion of minerals and vitamins in the body so whatever you're popping whatever medication you're on always read up research always be learning okay why while it might be addressing a certain symptom is it causing a negative impact as well on my body? So what could I be doing? You know, whether it's women in particular really need to make sure that they're um, they're from a hormone balance side, but for everything else, B vitamins are very important for us. Um, again, just on a, on a side, it, it's not just any B complex. It just be very careful what when you are supplemented with Bs, you need to make sure that they're, it's a good quality. So um, I think that's very important. But B vitamins, uh, your probiotics, your omegas, look at all the the natural um, yeah, yeah. and important uh, supplements. Yeah, okay. the, yeah. the thing is this, no, fine. Because I mean, the more you can, obviously you have this, you save it, you can go back and listen to it again. There's so much we talk about. And when you look at the medication, my clinic every day, <clears throat> you know, I, I've, I hate saying this, but I'm going to say it, but I find sometimes with elderly people that when you reach a certain age in this country, you're nearly surplus to requirements. You're just 
throwing medication at people for whatever reason. You know, I see elderly people and they're taking uh, calcium chew and cholesterol medication and Fosamax and they're getting injections and, you know, they're, uh, and, and they have so much stuff. And I mean, literally, you know, maybe five, 10, 15 blood pressure medications, you know, all of these things. And I'm saying that, you know, you should always go back with your GP, have it assessed. I mean, I know we saw a documentary in RT recently, people on medication for 15, 20, 25, 30 years, the same. And every doctor you go to and every consultant you go to, they add to it. So look, at the time has come when, you know, we've got to kind of hold our hand up and say, look, we are not providing an effective healthcare service in our country. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's sad uh, that that's the way it is, but that is the way it is. And this is why people need this type of information. As I said, you know, why isn't this taught within medical schools? It's not. There is no time given to really dealing with the reality of what causes people's problems. We have a sick care system, not a health care system. The only way that you can, uh, you know, have a health care system is when you provide it within your own home, when you work with it within your own home. And, you know, when we see people coming in who are taking medications, possible side effects, you know, uh, simple little things. I mean, we get a lot of women, for example, who suffer from UTIs, urinary tract infections, a lot of candida, you know, overgrowth, yeast overgrowth, you know, vaginal trush and all of these types of things. And these are things that some people don't want to talk about. But again, it's often a change of nutrition and using something like uh, Demanos, for example, for irritable bladder, Demanos, it's a magnet molecule you'll get in the health shop. Demanos is absolutely brilliant. And, you know, you can take it. It only works when it gets to the bladder and it attracts that bacteria off the wall of the bladder and it helps to release it. Something like uh, uh, the oil of oregano is an absolutely fantastic um, oil of oregano. You can get it in capsule, but it's a fantastic natural antibiotic that you can take. And, and women that we've told to take this, uh, who have been on continuous antibiotics, have been able to um, you know, live a normal, healthy life, of course, supporting with the diet. And Mary, we see that a lot uh, mm -hmm. before, before I talk about men and coronary issues, because we're getting questions. Mm -hmm. about, um, we see that a lot of, with people who have what you just said, the digestive system wrong and, and having that overgrowth of candida and having oh, that- to do with urinary tract infection. Urinary tract Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it would be huge. Um, and the other thing, yeah, the, obviously the more sugar that you're eating and feed, and carbohydrates are only feeding the the wrong type of yeast in your body as mm -hmm. well. So that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, the likes of vitamin C for an awful lot of uh, issues, including urinary tract infections, is really really good as well. So um, and mm -hmm. the urinary tract infections are candida and trush. Uh, is all back to rebalancing the gut and the mm -hmm. the good bacteria and the bad bacteria yes. and all that. So yes. you're looking at probiotics and certain probiotics are more helpful for certain <laughs> conditions. So um, yeah, there would be like Saccharomyces boulardii would be a very good strain of bacteria known to help if you're prone to urinary tract infections and stuff. So um, whatever you're dealing with, there will be certain strains or uh, a strain of probiotic that would be good but also you can get um, a wide range of probiotics naturally through like fermented um, foods and drinks mm -hmm. and uh, other ways which we discuss in the yeah. online program yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, as I said, the, 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 it, 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 we could sit and talk to you for hours and hours and hours about this because all we're doing is bringing to you our experience. I've been involved in this field for 27 years and we've had to work outside the box to enable people to get better. You know, so whether it's chronic fatigue, whether it's uh, autoimmune conditions like lupus, uh, like all sorts of colitis, Crohn's disease, rheumat uh, rheumatological disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, different types of things like that, you know, uh, whether it's um, MS, Parkinson's, motor neurons, irrespective of the medical term that's put on the symptom, folks, if we approach it by working with the energy, Professor Valerie Hunt, who was a medical professor, worked in, USLA, uh, worked in uh, UCLA, she worked with NASA for 25 years. She was able to map the bioenergetic process of the body and she said the primary cause of illness is a breakdown in the energy system. That energy system is broken down through our stresses and the modern day lives and stresses, you know, birth stress we talked about in the past, <clears throat> stresses throughout our lives, stresses at home, financial stresses. And when we stress the system, it's like you're overloading a socket. You're, you know, you're tripping the wires, you're tripping the fuse box, you know, you're, you know, you're, the whole system is tripping all the time. When you overload the system electrically, then you're going to produce different types of 
biochemistry, different hormones, then suddenly you are going to have a situation where you're going to behave with nutrition and it's as I said a downward spiral. What we're about is yes, medicine has a role to play, but and, and you go and you absolutely have your medical analysis done, as we said, because it's all about looking at integrating everything. But ultimately, it's when we go back in and deal with what we're talking about. You know, there is a reason, as Mary said, there are those three questions we ask in our clinic. Where is your problem coming from? How is it affecting you? How are you dealing with it? You cannot put an effective strategy into place if you don't know where the problem comes from. And it doesn't happen overnight. Remember, anybody who comes to us, we always say you've got to give yourself at least a year. While you might feel better in a week or a month or whatever, you've got to give your body a chance to eliminate a lot of problems. If you were to ask yourself a question now, what is floating around in your blood? Right now, this second, you're sitting down after your stressful day, eating certain types of food, drinking coffee, maybe wine, having alcohol, you know, taking loads of sugary foods, loads of, uh, of, 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 of toxic waste, maybe in your work, whatever. What is floating around in your blood? If, it's the, if, the, if the toxic waste is floating around in your blood, then that is, the, and that is what is keeping you going. That is either what is feeding your illness or it's what's making you healthy. And we have to become conscious. What type of oxygen is flowing through our body? What level of oxygen is flowing through our body? And if the energy isn't flowing, blood and oxygen and nutrients can't flow. We must get the energy flowing, get the blood, that blood must be clean. You know, we must get the level of oxygen flow through your body crystal clear and clean as, as possible as we can. If we can clean the system out and get the energy flowing uh, and clean it out to the best of it, it will work itself. It doesn't need you to understand that you have 60,000 miles of vessels in your body. It doesn't need you to understand that you're going through six septillion different transactions right now. It doesn't need you to understand that you have, you know, billions of microbes in your system. You just need to know, like your, like your phone, that when you switch it on, it works. When you go looking to make a call, you press the button and it calls. You don't need to know how it works. But the key, the same applies to your health. You need to know that if you want to get your system right, You've got to just simply approach it from the basis uh, <clears throat> that we are talking uh, about. And we're going to take maybe another uh, four or five minutes to chat to you about uh, uh, some questions. We have some qu uh, question in here. Uh, Carton, what, uh, what do you recommend for uh, stronger bones uh, with osteoporosis besides calcium plus? Well, <clears throat> you know, the jury is out on, on whether Calci2 or Fosamax or yes, when you have osteoporosis, when you have brittle bone problems, that's fine. A lot of people are on um, brittle bone medication or Calci2 and Fosamax and all these, sometimes getting proline injection and all that kind of stuff from while all that's fine short term. It could have an effect in the kidneys, that could affect your blood pressure, that could cause lots of different issues. Um, you know, obviously exercise is very good for bone density. Um, there are lots of different things. Food, Mary, yeah. we'll discuss that in a moment about, uh, about that. Uh, that depends on the severity of the problem. Uh, we hear a lot of people talking about osteopenia. I mean, some people uh, we hear coming into us are on these types of medications because an X-ray has been done. Uh, really, really, realistically, you need to get that DEXA scan done. If the DEXA scan shown there is some issue with regard to your, um, your, with your, with your bone density, then uh, you know you need to look at the reasons why. Uh, I see a lot of patients coming in. And I've had personal experience with this where uh, people have been put on uh, um, the calcium, uh, calcium, other types of medications like this. And I've seen how it's built up in the body and caused kidney problems and dehydration and uh, elevated uh, hypercal caused hypercalcemia, elevated uh, calcium in the blood. Uh, and often gone down the road of seeing hematologists and all of these types of things and thinking it was something more serious to come back to find it was just a medication. So we need, as Mary said, to be far more informed about medication while it has its role to play, but we need to be far more informed as to the side effects of this medication. So exercise, uh, energy work, yes, uh, calcium, uh, different ways you can get all the calcium you want from you know, all your greens, but Mary, you'd like to touch on that, uh, uh, yeah. that's natural calcium supplements you uh, use? First of all, <clears throat> I suppose bone strength isn't just about calcium, first of all. It and you don't, and you don't get it not. from milk. Okay, no, you, you don't, don't get it from milk, just in case people think yeah. all these advertisements, you know, st strong bones for milk. Don't well, agree it's with not that. the sole <coughs> source of it. Uh, Absolutely not. Now, I, I would say, first of all, you look at your absorption. Actually, one of the main reasons that our bone density decreases is, first of all, if your oh, well. years of low stomach acid, because that means you're not breaking down <laughs> your foods properly, you're not absorbing it, and so your body doesn't have the raw materials. Um, and then our body is always constantly trying to 
deal with um it, what's uh, with issues so it's going to draw we say if if you're on a very acidic diet your body is always trying to balance okay so it's going to draw the calcium which will neutralize the acidity in your blood so it's going to draw the calcium uh, plus if your um your diet doesn't give it sufficient minerals including calcium yes but there's magnesium it needs vitamin d it needs vitamin k it needs a whole range of um minerals and vitamins for bone health it's not, we're not just talking about calcium so absorption is central a huge um cause of low bone density is actually uh, gluten sensitivity or or like uh, sensitivity uh, where you're 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 sensitive to gluten so your uh, a whole absorption is compromised and then um, an awful lot of celiacs actually deal with um bone issues uh, the other thing actually that's huge to do with bone density is if you're on uh, steroids for many years as mm -hmm. we know that's a major thing but again if you're on steroids in this country you're given calcium too, but you're not given any other components like so the calcium gets into your cells and into your bones it needs other carrier uh, cofactors like magnesium so magnesium would be huge vitamin D, of course. and vitamin d mm. is the other a mm. huge one uh, so they, that would be so um like in general we should be always looking to get a whole range of minerals you don't like actually it can be very dangerous to take calcium supplementation because it can cause um calcification in, in the your arteries, blood in yeah the, in the um so in the heart attacks don't yeah. don't go out and buy a calcium uh, supplement please uh get uh, there's really 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 good bone formulas out there so if you are dealing with um, osteoporosis or osteopenia or just if you are, are aware that if you've been on steroids for years look first of all to get in very uh, mineral dense foods into your diet so uh, the likes of uh, seafood sea, sea vegetables sea veg, yes, it would yeah. be very high naturally in all the different minerals um, the likes of kelp um, is a real natural source of calcium so but it has a whole load of other and a whole range of other minerals as well so that's the thing if you can get your minerals and vitamins as much as possible through Nature. your foods yeah Nature. and na a natural whole foods your body can use it better because that is the problem as well is the ab absorbability of some supplements you you can be taking them and they throw off the whole balance mm. in your body so at all times it's to do uh, things as natural as possible where your body actually recognizes the the food or the and if you're taking supplements um try and uh, get the least uh, synthetic form of supplements so there would be a lot of really good natural like supplements even the likes of the spirulinas and the wheatgrasses would be very high in naturally high in minerals and stuff so i would be looking to them yeah. as well yeah, yeah. of course you know, in, in West Clare here, we have a very good uh, the Atlantic yeah. Sea Veg there, you know, so <clears throat> the tactics are they're, they're so great. And you can get this Sea Veg, which is all the magnesium, of course. You, yeah, sea, yeah. Bath, uh, sea Veg bath is great. You can get in your health shop. Uh, you know, they, you know, it's really, really good. You get all those minerals. And, and the sprinklers, and, uh, like uh, yeah, every single like, thing yeah. that I cook at home, yeah, I same. am sprinkling yeah. uh, sea vegetables on it because it doesn't change the flavour of the food no. and it's a really easy way get to get a bit of a, a multi-mineral vitamin into your food. Yeah, and the, thing yeah. Is, and the thing about it is that, you know, you would think in modern day that people have all nutrients because they're eating, you would think, all of the right mm -hmm. food. Uh, but no, you know, it doesn't work like that. In actual fact, people are eating plenty of food, but they're suffering from malnutrition. So if you were to do a nutrition analysis of everybody, if we were to assess the microbial function of the gut, uh, if we were to look at the electrical structure of the cell, we would find that that's where the problem is. So disease begins when the electrical activity of the cell changes, when the, when the behavior to that change is, uh, the, is adapted by yourself, your food and your stress. Then that changes the microbes. Microbes signal the DNA, changes the DNA. There's an immune response. The immune response is inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. And when your body's inflamed all the time and you keep feeding it, then you're going to break down your tissue. You're going to break down all the different types of problems, depending on you, depending on what your weaknesses are. <clears throat> then suddenly, uh, you know, you might be told, well, sure, your mother or father had it and you have it. Don't buy into that. 
everything can be changed, folks. Everything can be changed. And, um, you know, your quality of life can be improved. And I know we've been talking now for the last hour about, uh, you know, about, you know, your mindset, about the energy system, about, you know, food. And you can see that it's a it's a real, real sort of broad area to get into. <clears throat> but uh, I suppose to pull it down, that if we can get your energy system flowing, if we can get your mindset focused and working with your health, not your illness, if we can get you to work with dealing with your emotional stress on a day to day basis, if we can put you on a good nutritional plan, uh, getting in the right supplements, eventually working with your right food, uh, getting in the right food. And, you know, if you're willing to put in that time and effort and engage in that type of process and behavior, then things can change. Uh, you know, we know it because that's what we've seen in our clinics over the last 25 or 27 years. And um, of course, some people come in, they need pro other medical analysis. We work with medical people also. So we're not negating the value of what medicine has to offer. So, so again, uh, I want to say to people, do not alter the intake, intake of medication. What we're saying to you is, let's start thinking about things differently, okay? So <clears throat> if you start thinking about, if you start doing differently, because if you keep doing the same old, same old, you're going to experience. If you went to bed last night and you got up with pain today, if you didn't change something today, you're going to get up with pain tomorrow. You're not going to sleep tonight. You're going to have different types of issues and so on. You need to change. There is no magic wand, no magic pill, and your health does not come in a capsule. It comes when you put time and effort, and I keep reiterating this, it comes when you put time and effort in. So... Um, I mean, Mary and I are going to do this quite regularly, but of course, if you want to see, we have uh, probably, we've put a program together. <clears throat> and the program, uh, obviously, over the years, when we started doing this work first in 1990, when, uh, you know, Tom Griffin and myself brought this to, the, to, to, to Ireland and brought it to the attention of, 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 of the Irish people, um, you know, on the Late Late Show with Gay Barn, we were able to show that by working with the energy, we were able to change people's lives. It's on my YouTube channel at michaelodai.com. You can see it. You can still see that show. It created the biggest response ever to a health issue. And we were just working with the energy then because people were eating good, you know, didn't have the stress of mobile phones and they were out in the land and in the bog and they were working away and having fun and, you know, playing games. Whereas nowadays, you know, they don't have that. They don't have that emotional outlet. It's pressure, pressure all the time. So therefore we have to bring in a lot more. But when we started working with the energy, people's lives changed. And, you know, I've always believed that within the family home, um, that we need to teach people how to do bioenergy therapy within the family home. What is the easiest way to do it? <clears throat> we sat down, you know, about two years ago, talking about this uh, with Myra Geary, of course, in Limerick, and uh, with others as well, uh, Little Blue Studios, we were talking about them, how uh, they could help Elaine Hennessy there, and those and Rona and that, and I put a little team together, and we came up with a program, and the whole idea <clears throat> of that program, of course, and uh, with Pascal Brooks as well, uh, doing the video stuff for us, uh, you know, we, we, we came up with this little program, and the whole idea of the program is to teach parents or families you know uh, the bioenergy therapy uh, for uh, for for families the bioenergy therapy to work uh, with this family health care program that we have devised and the whole idea is that we want to teach you uh, how to do the bioenergy therapy mary wants to teach you how it is that you can work with the right nutrition we will also talk with you about the new, the, the environment within your own home how you can change that looking at how you can deal with the stresses uh, of your environment the stresses of your work that when your child uh, has uh, some problem whether it be a learning or behavioral difficulty whether it be um, maybe cystic fibrosis or uh, you know asthmatic symptoms or diabetic conditions or some member of your family has some illness that we've been discussing you know that you can work with the bioenergy therapy within your own home that you can work with this family health care program that you can get that energy flowing for that member of your family these are unique skills they have never really been brought to the uh, to the public domain in this form before uh, because we felt that need we felt the need needed to be done there because people ringing my clinic have to wait a number of months before they get in and i think you know sometimes people don't have that time and um when we see the types of conditions that people have and the cost it does to, to have the type of treatment, uh, it should be made available in every hospital, of course. Every hospital, of course. But now is your chance, folks. To uh, I, I I was thinking of it like a, a deck of cards. You know, people say you know you have to play the hand you're dealt, uh, and and I think what we're about now and what we're doing tonight and what we're doing with this amazing uh, you know family healthcare program uh, is that 
uh, we're shuffling the deck. We're saying to you, hold on a second here. You take the deck of cards, you shuffle them, and you deal yourself the hand that you want to make your life a success, to enable your child to feel better, to be happier in education, in, 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 uh, in general health, <clears throat> in career, you know, in yourselves. That we can make our lives healthier and happier. We can have lives without illness. So it's about, you know, time to reshuffle the deck. It's time to change our mind around who we are and how we function and to realize that we're evolving spiritual beings that we're not just this physical body sitting here you know and things happen you know that we're evolving spiritual beings that you know we're all on the journey to the grave how can we make our lives easier uh, rather than making them more difficult and with this program uh, and we're going to put a link onto this <clears throat> family healthcare program uh, bioenergy therapy uh, family healthcare program when we we're going to put this link on with this post so uh, afterwards and please share this because there's knowledge we've given tonight mary and i that's going to be of help to many others and as i said we'll be continuing this but um at least if you uh, you know, learn how to work with the energy, learn to administer a proper nutritional strategy and plan within your own home, learn to relax your own home and make it a healthier home, healthier environment. Then I think that many, many, many things can change for you. You know, that uh, the, your children's health, your health, those conditions like fibromyalgia, like diabetics, like, uh, uh, you know, cholesterol issues, like back pain, digestive disorder, sleeping problems, you know, feeling down, anxious, that the techniques that we are we would provide within our clinic. We are now giving them to you through this IT platform, uh, you know, that you can learn the bioenergy therapy skills that I have worked and developed over the last uh, 27 years. You can learn the skills of using nutrition <clears throat> to help to heal your body. You know, uh, let, let food be your medicine. We always hear about that. And uh, if you take, uh, you know, the, uh, those skills of the, the energy work and the food and the knowledge that we provide as well in these modules. And um, the first, these, this program is delivered over seven weeks, okay? When you sign up, uh, you get your first module, which is a PowerPoint presentation I give for about an hour or more, an overview of you, how you function, your environment, and all of what we just talked about. And then, of course, I begin to teach you using uh, Alicia McCarty, who was a young girl who came to me who had lots of issues and recovered. Uh, she forms part of our testimonies as well. And you'll see me working with Alyssa and showing, and you'll see the way she responds. And you'll be amazed that when you work, when you're going to work now with the bioenergy therapy, uh, the way I'm teaching on this program, when you work with this, you'll be amazed at what people are going to feel, the heat, the tingling, the coolness, pulled backwards, forwards. And you think, God, this is absolutely amazing. And of course, um, then uh, as part of this program, um, I'll be bringing people together for a one day workshop okay and that one day workshop is to make sure you're doing it right that your technique is right and it gives you an opportunity to meet us and to ask any questions as well and i support you as well with the um group with the family healthcare uh, group that i've set up which you can uh, connect to uh, and uh, which you can link on to when 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 you uh, when you purchase the actual program uh, for your family health so um lots to think about as i said i'm going to put up a link immediately as soon as uh, we finish here with this post and um, uh, have a good look at it. Any queries, you can always ring my office, of course, Francis will be able to help you uh, or indeed Ava or Tina, whatever. And uh, so look, I know and uh, we've, I've put about a year and a half, two years of work into just putting this program together for over seven weeks, one module per week, teaching you the bioenergetic therapy skills, teaching, giving you the knowledge to understand it, giving you the awareness as to how it is this energy gets imbalanced and of course Mary's coming in on module four to teach you all about nutrition and of course available from there on as well should you require more private consultation uh, with her as well so uh, I think this is a very exciting time uh, I'm just calling this a kind of a, a little bit of a soft launch at the moment where <clears throat> just want to make sure that everything is running right and uh, just to give people a chance to get in on it and and I think it can this program um, that we've put together, uh, you know, will, not can, but will change your families and your, um, uh, your, your, your child's life if you administer in the way that we have developed. I'm really, really excited about it. Yeah, yeah well, uh, what I want to say is, uh, you see, I also trained as a and she's a parent, therapist. Of course. And I'm a parent, yeah. I have three, three children, uh, 13 and down. So what uh, bioenergy training in bioenergy and nutrition has done for me is um, like I'm so confident in 
uh, dealing with any of the, the issues that arise as part of family life in our house. Like I, um, I suppose I'm lucky because none of us are dealing with any big health issues, but what's huge is I have, I'm so relaxed and so confident about anything that comes up to do with my children in particular. Um, I realized last year, um, when my youngest fell and split her jaw, that, that that was the first trip to a doctor in years. It was, and when I went to the press, I actually had no pain relief for uh, that I could give Shauna um, because what was in the press was uh, Paralink suppositories that were about five years out of date or something. I don't know. So uh, it's it's amazing to have control and to be knowledgeable and know what will help. Um, just on a day you know from day to day but also um whether it's whether your children are very active in sports what can you do to support them if they are suffering from allergies uh just from every angle um it's uh it's fantastic so in the program as much as possible i'm trying to bring across what has wor really worked what works for me every day at home with my gang um and then also I know because I'm a mother, um, there's a lot of challenges and, you know, you're trying to, when you're trying to do the best and you know uh, the theory of what's the best teeth, but you have to be practical on the ground as well. So uh, a lot of what, what I cover in the module that I did for Michael is um, just ways that you can even sneak in the good nutrients, you know, what, what would be, you know, I get parents all the time saying, but sure, they won't eat the veg for me or I, I can't get them to eat well or whatever. But there's ways and means around everything. So we have a lot of that kind of um, camouflaging stuff if needs be, but also just easy ways every day that you can get uh, minerals and vitamins and nutrient density into your children and your every. It's not about children, it's yourself as well. So... Um, the, yeah, that's kind of yeah. what we did. Um, I, I suppose the the overall what I think about the program is that it's um, it's not just about bioenergy and nutrition either. It's looking at everything. So it looks at like it gets you to question yourself. Like, what am I eating every day? Am I relaxing? How am I relaxing? Am I moving my body enough? What am I doing? And am I sleeping well? have I balance in my body or have I balance in my life so it's a, a overall when you have the seven modules done you have a, a really good um concept of how you can rebalance your life I think anyway. and the thing yeah. is you know when Tom Griffin and myself did this work first when we started off in 1990 what you guys will know after the seven weeks uh will be far more than what we knew when we started and we've come this far so you know the implication is huge and of course after that if you want to want to become a, a practitioner and, and have a career in it then that's something else as well but the most important thing is what we want is as i spoke to you about this during the week i think there is a need to deliver into people's homes an effective health care system and it's only until you as a parent or a member of family take that upon yourself to become the commander in chief within your home and say right i'm going to take responsibility here i'm going to make sure i'm going to change the nutritional habits because when somebody has a problem in your home you know if it's cancer or if it's depression if it's a child with digestive or learning and behavioral disorders for example you know if that situation arises what we advise is the family change don't just look at the child or that member of your family with the problem. If everybody changes and everybody, you know, puts the shoulder to the wheel, everybody can benefit. And this is what we're seeing. We often bring in families to talk with them and explain, this is what you need to do. So family, it's all about the family. You know, it's all about teaching you how to work with the bioenergy therapy of, of the family, work with the right energy of the home, uh, work, make sure that the energy is positive, it's clean, working with the food because food is also converted to energy. 
you know, the oxygen that you're breathing, all of that is converted to energy. What is influencing the energy within your own home? Your Wi-Fi, your mobile phone. We know mobile phones do contribute to a change in the energy frequency, which has been shown to contribute to possibly cancer and other conditions. So look, uh, you know, we see young kids at, at nighttime sleeping with phones under their pillows. At nighttime, when you go into your bed, have a policy, no phone in the room, no Wi-Fi, shut it down, all of these things. So we bring to you that kind of knowledge and awareness within within the um, within the, the this pro within this pro this treatment program. And as I said to you, you know the family, you know when you sign up and when you when you purchase the program, um, you you become a member of the and I put you into a, a a group and I will be regularly talking to you. As I said, bringing you on on site. So look, it, it it can be a very very exciting time. I think for us, it's the shift we need to make to uh, give this knowledge to people and no longer live in this uh, notion that somebody is uh, gifted or has a special gift. We all have that ability. So as I said to you, we're going to post this. We're going to post a link to it, <clears throat> to this. So again, I want to thank Myra Geary and Jenny Madden and uh, Little Blue Studios for the work that they've done to help us to put this together. Uh, you know, Mary, Pascal, Brooks, myself, <clears throat> we appreciate the work. I want to thank uh, Aaron Perkins, of course, who's coming in to help with regard to the, the social media stuff and all of that. And most of all, we want to thank you, any of you out there who've supported us down through the years. We really, really appreciate it. Not everybody, unfortunately, down through the years has been, has uh, recovered regrettably, depending on the nature of the problem. You know, it isn't for everybody. But the key to it is that um, we know that if people implement the changes and the system that we've developed, we know that it can have uh, huge benefits. It's so very proactive. It's very it? proactive, yeah. yeah and look, there's huge interaction with us as well. Changes. And, uh, uh, you know, we have a number of things that we plan <clears throat> with how we're going to add to this program as we progress uh, particularly with children and things like that and um, uh, the key is the more vibrant the more proactive the more healthier we can make uh, your mindset and your attitude the more uh, the the more healthier you can have a home so you can have a healthy happy home your home can be a home and you can have a life without illness so uh, we're looking forward to the ongoing Annette uh, O'Sullivan hopefully we covered some of your stuff tonight thank you for joining us all the time and as I said everybody who joined us tonight and for the last week we'll be touching base again next week with you uh, talking to you at least once a week and to the group as well uh, Mary and I and we'll come in if you have any other questions yes bring them on uh, we can cover them the next time uh, loads of people came in about back problems you know, plantar fasciitis and uh, uh, migraine and, uh, you know, colic symptoms and all of that. So a lot of this we cover on the program as well. Where So children's health can be really, really improved and changed. So um, as I said, we're looking forward uh, to our journey with you. Um, it's going to be exciting for us. It's going to be exciting for you. Uh, any queries at all in michaelodardi.com. Go on it now if you if you want. Uh, Google michaelodardi.com. Go to the what we do and the drop down, you'll see the um, Biology Therapy to Family Healthcare Training Program and you'll see all of the information there. Look at the video clips that's on that. Listen to what Michael Flatley has to say, what parents and children have to say about their experience with us. Uh, go on my YouTube channel, see what uh, people over the years have said and how they've benefited. I think this will encourage you to believe that you too can do what we've been doing. You too can change your life and you too can have a healthy home. So thank you very much, folks, for this evening. Uh, thanks to Mary, uh, Aaron, who you don't see. Uh, she's behind the scenes. They're taking your questions and handing out and things like that. So look, we really appreciate it. We're going to post this. Have a lovely evening. So a big wave goodbye, Mary. Bye. So uh, we'll be chatting to you soon. Hope you found it interesting. Bye-bye.